It's been over a month since the last video, and now we've entered a new year. And well, I've got a bit of a backlog of stuff to talk about, so let's get into what I've been up to. I've now added equipable armour. For now they work like weapons where you automatically equip them when you pick them up off the ground. In the future, this will change as I have another system in mind for managing your equipment. To get this to work efficiently, I had to work out a way to load the armour in and out of memory. Once loaded in, I would then have to transfer the bone data from the character to the armour. The way to do this is exporting the mesh with the skeleton in Blender. This ensures that Unity has the bone data in the skin mesh renderer for it to animate appropriately. However, when instantiating the armour, I have two options, with the skeleton and without, but both have issues. With the skeleton, we're able to position the mesh where we want and remove the mesh from it, but then deleting the skeleton afterward would result in releasing the asset from memory. Without the skeleton, we're unable to position the mesh at all due to how the skin mesh renderer works, so it will always spawn at the world's origin, however this method bypasses the asset issue altogether. The latter would be fine if we were able to hide the armour from view when attaching it to the player, but no matter what I tried, it always became visible for a few frames as it was attaching. The only solution to this is a workaround. The maps will have to be designed to never intersect with the world's origin, otherwise the player will see the armour loading in. To further complicate things, there is a small delay as the pose of the armour updates. This meant if I didn't incorporate a delay between when the armour is put on and the underwear mesh is turned off, you get a glimpse of the character in the suit God gave her. Will the game have nudity? No. Well, maybe. Typically, armour meshes will include only parts of the body mesh to prevent skin clipping through the clothing. I opted for a different solution, where I use a black and white mask to mark areas of the body I want to be clipped out using an alpha threshold. Finally got the thing working as intended and introduced a second unfinished armour set to fix any issues when switching between multiple armours. And with them finally in the game and working, I could turn my focus towards introducing the damage pipeline. This is actually a bit of a convoluted process, so I'll summarise it briefly. First of all, a player's weapon has a base damage value with skills assigned to it. Each skill has a damage multiplier that is then multiplied with the weapon's base damage to give us the raw damage of the skill. When a skill effect is called, this info is passed through in a struct called Damage Context. I had to create a detection system for the slash effects. This detects colliders marked as a hitbox and looks for a damage interface. When the hitbox is detected, it compiles the hit data into another struct known as Hit Context. This includes the damage context as well as information such as the point of impact and the source of the damage. In the case a hitbox belongs to an actor such as a player or enemy, it sends the hit context to the actor's stats to go through a series of damage calculations and subtracts it from the target's health. Speaking of health, you'll notice I have two health bars. The red one is our HP and the grey one is our AP. The core focus of this game is dungeon crawling. Games like Darkest Dungeon do this very well, where you enter with limited resources and slowly find yourself becoming whittled down, eventually losing your party through a series of bad choices. This approach is common within the roguelite genre, so you may be asking, is this going to be a roguelite? And the answer is, kind of. I guess I'll talk more on that later down the line. Besides this, I also intend to play into the fantasy of class archetypes purely through the equipment system. I want your equipment to shape your playstyle through the skills they provide, while feeding into your stereotypical classes like fighter, ranger, etc. So the purpose of AP is to try and serve these two core ideas. Durability is often a badly implemented mechanic that only serves as some kind of pointless gold sink in many games, often hindering gameplay rather than enriching it. So why do I have something that resembles armor durability? Well, the idea comes from a game I played in my childhood, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Armour was essentially just an extension of your health bar, and a similar system can be found in Divinity Original Sin 2, but there, it has some interesting condition protection systems associated with it as well. I like these systems because you can physically see how your armour is protecting you, rather than just reducing numbers. I want to do something similar, but with a bit more to it than just giving you a HP bonus. Armour has two main stats, durability and resilience. Durability is basically our armour points that are displayed by this bar, whereas resilience is kind of like a defence rating shown in the brackets. Any damage above this number from a single strike results in leak damage into your HP bar. So in the case it is 10, and attack deals 15 damage, 5 damage is dealt to the health. However, it will still do 15 damage to the AP. This is to make it easier to balance different armors. If it only took damage that it absorbs, armors with high resilience ratings will deplete faster than ones with low ratings. You could say any damage past the threshold is doubled, as it is dealt both to health and durability at the same time. 
Resilience's purpose is to encourage heavy hitting attacks against heavily armoured targets, since the damage from light attacks will result in less damage overall. It is also capped to the current AP, so you can see as the AP drops below 10 here, the resilience becomes weaker. There are also multiple armor slots, so in the case we have a helmet and a body piece with these stats, the total will be 125 AP and 15 resilience. The damage received is split and subtracted equally across all armor pieces, so the helmet will break after 50 damage has been taken, reducing the resilience down to 10. Getting this to work correctly requires a recursive method that basically continues to call itself until the task it is assigned is complete. This is to ensure that when the helmet breaks only receiving part of the damage, the remainder is then distributed correctly amongst the remaining armour pieces. As of right now, armour with high resilience is the superior option, but a plan in future to make heavier armours have drawbacks such as shorter dodge and higher stamina cost. I also mentioned how I wanted armors to have skills attached to them. This is to make lighter armors have their own unique roles, and well, I have a few other ideas that I may add later down the line. There is currently no way of restoring the durability of armor, but rest assured, I do have plans for that in the future too. Oh, and if it wasn't obvious, this system will be applied to enemies as well, to add some variety and strategy to bringing them down. So to coincide with the new armor system, I introduced two new multipliers to skills, an AP damage multiplier and a pierce value. The AP damage multiplier is applied after the initial calculation, so it doesn't affect leak damage. This is intended for AP shredding attacks, while keeping them balanced against others when it comes to HP damage. So in the case an attack does 10 damage against armor with 10 resilience, it results in no leak damage. This remains true even if the AP damage multiplier is set to 150%. The result is a bonus 5 AP damage, and when the armor is gone, the damage to the HP remains at 10. Pierce, on the other hand, is a percentage of the total damage that ignores resilience. These two stats can be used in tandem, so by setting the AP damage multiplier to 0% and the Pierce to 100%, AP is completely bypassed. This is intended to be used for armor piercing attacks, like a sword thrust. And as of right now, that is it for the damage system. In the future I'll be adding conditions where their application is determined by if the target has armour or not, and potentially a weapon swapping system so the player can equip themselves for different enemy encounters. I did add a few other things such as projectile traps and the basics of a hit stun system with some placeholder hit effects. This will be further expanded in the future as I iterate on the combat system and I eventually introduce enemies. This is going to be an ongoing project through 2023, so if you like what you see and you want to help out, leave a comment, like and subscribe. It all aids in the war effort against the algorithm gods. If you want to support me financially, I have a Patreon, but be warned, no build will be coming until probably after I've introduced enemies, as I'm still in the early stages of this project. And thanks to the generous chaps and or ladies who are already supported me there. And with all that said, maybe you should go watch the previous devlog where I explain how I created the sword slash effects by clicking here. And if you want to do none of that, would you kindly bugger off? Maybe.